Right, so I'm going to start every week uploading some stories that I've read and you can play them to your children while they go to sleep. This is called The Goblin's Arm by William Elliot Griffiths. Reiko and his brave companion Tasuna are great heroes in Japanese fairy tales. Onis are terrifying goblins or demons with horns on their heads and tusks in their mouths. Under Captain Reiko were three brave guardsmen, one of whom was named Tasuna. The duty of these men at arms was to watch at the gates leading to the palace. It had become a dangerous place in the city, so many good people were afraid to go into the streets at night. Worse than all else was the report that hill goblins called Onis in Japan were prowling around in the dark. They would seize people by the hair or their heads. Then they would drag them away to the mountains. The worst place in the town to which the two horned goblin came most often was at the southwestern gate. To this post of danger, Reiko sent Tsuna the bravest of his guards. It was on a dark, rainy and dismal night that Tsuna started well armed to stand guard at the gate. Tasuna's trusty helmet was knotted over his chin and all the pieces of his armour well were well laced up. His sandals were tight on his feet and in his belt was thrust a trusty sword freshly sharpened until his edge was like razors and with it, with it he could cut in half a hair floating in the air. Tasuna paced up and down the stone way with his eyes and ears wide open. The wind was blowing frightfully, the storm howled whistling and the rain fell in such torrents that soon the cords of Tasuna's armour and his tunic were soaked through. The great bronze bell of the temple on the hill boomed out the hours one after another until a single stroke told Tsuna it was the hour of midnight. Two hours passed and still Tsuna was wide awake. The storm had calmed but it was darker than ever. The hour of three rang out and the soft, mellow notes of the temple bell died away. The warrior, almost without knowing it, grew sleepy and fell into a doze. Then he started and woke up. Tsuna shook himself, jingled his armour, pinched himself and even pulled out his little knife and pricked his leg with the point of it to keep himself awake. But all in vain... Overcome by drowsiness, he leant against the gatepost and fell asleep. This was just what the Oni wanted. All the time it had been squatting on the cross, peace at the top of the gate, waiting. There he is there. waiting for his opportunity. Now the Oni slid down as softly as a monkey and with its iron-like claws grabbed Tasuna by the helmet and began to drag him into the air. In an instant Tasuna was awake, seizing the hairy goblin's wrist with his left hand. He drew his sword with his right, swept it round his head and cut off the Oni's arm. Frightened and howling with pain, the creature leapt from the post and disappeared into the clouds. There's the Oni, the goblin. And he ran away as Tasuni hurt him. Tasuni waited with drawn sword in hand, but in a few hours it was morning. 
the sun rose on the pagondas and gardens and temples of the capital city. Everything was beautiful and bright with beautiful flowers. To sooner return to report to his captain carrying the goblin's arm in triumph. Reiko examined it and praised Tasuna loudly for his bravery, then rewarded him with a silken sash. Now it is said that if a goblin's arm be cut off, it can be joined with the body again if it is found within a week. So Reiko warned Tasuna to lock it up and watch it night and day in case he had it stolen from him before the week was up. Tasuna went to the stone cutters and bought a strong box cut out of the solid stone. It had a heavy lid on it which slid in a groove and came out only by touching a secret spring. Into this he put the arm, then setting it in his bedchamber, he guarded it day and night, day and night, day and night, keeping the gate and all his doors locked. He didn't allow anyone who was a stranger to look at the trophy. Six days passed by and Tasuna began to think he was safe, for all of his doors were tightly shut. So he set the box out in the middle of the room and sat down in ease before it. He took off his armour and put on his court robes during the evening, but rather late. There was a feeble knock, like that of an old woman at the gate outside. Tasuna cried out, Who's there? The squeaky voice of his aunt as it seemed, who was a very old woman, replied, I want to see my nephew to praise him for his bravery in cutting the goblin's arm off. So Tasuna let her in and carefully locked the door behind her. Tasuna helped her into the room where she sat down on the mats in the front of the box, very close to it. Then she grew talkative and praised to Suna until he felt very proud. All the time the old woman's left shoulder was covered with her dress, while her right hand was out. Finally, she begged to be allowed to see the arm to sooner at first politely refused, but she urged until he slid back the stone lid just a little. This is my arm, cried the old woman, turning into a goblin and dragging it out of the casket. The goblin flew up to the ceiling and was through the roof in a twinkling. To sooner rushed out of the house to shoot it with an arrow, but... He could just see the goblin. Far off in the clouds, grinning horribly. As he watched, he saw the cut-off arm join again with the body and the goblin shook both fists at him in victory. Nighty-night, children.